Aisha bint Abibaka. The life of Aisha, the second wife of the Prophet Muhammad, is one of great inspiration. Aisha did not graduate from any university, but still her utterances are studied in halls of learning throughout the world, in faculties of literature. Her legal pronouncements are reviewed in schools of law, and her life and works are pondered and researched by students and teachers of Muslim history as they have been for over a thousand years. The bulk of her vast treasure of knowledge was obtained when she was still quite young. In her early childhood, she was brought up by her father, who was a greatly liked and respected man for his warmth, his wide knowledge, gentle manners, and an agreeable presence. He was also a close friend of the noble prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, who was a frequent visitor to their home since the very early days of his mission. In Aisha's youth, already known for her beauty and formidable memory, she came under the loving care and attention of the prophet himself. As his wife and close companion, she acquired from him knowledge and insight such as no woman has ever acquired. Aisha became the Prophet's companion in Mecca when she was most likely in the tenth year of her life, with her marriage to the Prophet taking place in the second year after the Hijra, when she was about fourteen or fifteen years old. Before and after her wedding, she maintained a natural jollity and innocence and did not seem at all overawed by the thought of being wedded to him who was the messenger of God, whom all his companions, including her own mother and father, treated with such love and reverence as they gave to no one else. Once, when the Muslims were favored with enormous riches, Aisha was given a gift of 100,000 dirhams. She was fasting when she received the money, and she distributed the entire amount to the poor and needy, even though at that moment she had no provisions in her house. Shortly afterwards, a maidservant said to her, Could you buy meat for a dirham with which to break your fast? If I had remembered, I would have done so, she answered. The Prophet's affection for Aisha remained to the last. During his final illness, it was to Aisha's apartment that he went. For much of the time he lay there on a couch with his head resting on her breast or on her lap. It was she who took a tooth stick from her brother, chewed upon it to soften it, and gave it to the Prophet. Despite his weakness, he rubbed his teeth with it vigorously. Not long afterwards, he lost consciousness, and Aisha thought it was the onset of death. But after an hour, he opened his eyes again. It is Aisha who has preserved for us these dying moments of the most honored of God's creation, his beloved messenger. May he shower his choicest blessings on him always. When he opened his eyes again, Aisha remembered Iris having said to her, No prophet is taken by death until he has been shown his place in paradise and then offered the choice to live or die. He will not choose us, Aisha said to herself. Then she heard him murmur, with the supreme communion in paradise, with those upon whom God has showered his favor, the prophets, the martyrs, and the righteous. And again she heard him murmur, O oh Lord, with the supreme communion. And these were the last words she heard him speak. Gradually his head grew heavier upon her breast until others in the room began to lament and Aisha laid his head on the pillow and joined them in lamentation. In the floor of Aisha's room near the couch where he was lying, a grave was dug in which was buried the seal of the prophets. Aisha lived on almost 50 years after the passing away of the prophet. She had been his wife for a decade. Much of this time was spent in learning and acquiring the knowledge of the most important source of God's guidance, the Holy Quran. Aisha was one of three wives, the other two being Haswa and Umm Salama, who memorized the entire revelation of the Qur'an. Like Hafsa, she had her own script of the Qur'an written after the Prophet had died. 
So far as the hadith or sayings of the Prophet is concerned, Aisha is one of four persons who transmitted more than 2,000 sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. Many of these pertain to some of the most intimate aspects of personal behavior, which only someone in Aisha's position could have learned. What is most important is that her knowledge of hadith was passed on in written form by at least three persons, including her nephew Urwa, who became one of the greatest scholars among the generation after the companions. Many of the learned companions of the Prophet and their followers benefited from Aisha's knowledge. Abu Musa al-Ashari once said, If we companions of the Messenger of Allah had any difficulty on a matter, we asked Aisha about it. Her nephew Urwa asserts that she was proficient not only in fiqh, but also in medicine and poetry. Many of the senior companions of the Prophet came to ask her for advice concerning questions of inheritance, which required a medical mind. Scholars regard her as one of the earliest fuqa of Islam, scholar of Islamic jurisprudence, along with persons like Umar ibn al-Khattab, Ali, and Abdullah ibn Abbas. The Prophet, referring to her extensive knowledge of Islam, is reported to have said, Learn a portion of your religion from this red-colored lady. Humaira, meaning red-colored, was an epithet given to Aisha by the Prophet. Aisha not only possessed great knowledge, but also took an active part in educational and social reform. As a teacher, she had a clear and persuasive manner of speech, and her power of oratory has been described in superlative terms by al who said, I have heard the speeches of Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, and the Khulafa up to this day, but I have not heard speech more persuasive and more beautiful from the mouth of any person than that from the mouth of Aisha. Men and women came from far and wide to benefit from her knowledge, with the number of women having been greater than that of men. Besides answering inquiries, she took many boys and girls, some of them orphans, into her custody and educated them through her care and guidance. This was in addition to her relatives who received instructions from her. Her house thus became a school and an academy of learning. Some of her students were outstanding and included her nephew Urwa, a distinguished reporter of Hadith, and among her women pupils is the name of Umrah bint Abdurrahman. She is regarded by scholars as one of the trustworthy narratives of Hadith and is said to have acted as Aisha's secretary who received and applied to letters addressed to her. The example of Aisha in promoting education and in particular the education of Muslim women in the laws and the teachings of Islam is a great example of Islam's equity between men and women, a clear example of what it means to be a woman in Islam. After Khadija al-Kubra, the Great, and Fatima al-Zahra, the Resplendent, Aisha as siddiqa the one who affirms the truth, is regarded as the best woman in Islam. Because of the strength of her personality, she was a leader in many fields of knowledge, including social and political affairs, and is held as one of the most respected women of her time. Aisha died in the year 58 AH, in the month of Ramadan, and as she instructed, was buried in the Janat al-Baqi in the City of Light, Medina, beside the graves of other companions of the beloved Prophet Muhammad.